സായിറാം വെൽക്കം ടു ശ്രീ സത്യസായി ലോകസേവ ഗുരുകുലം ഓൺലൈൻ ക്ലാസ്സസ് സോ വി ബീൻ ലേണിംഗ് ലിമിറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് കണ്ടിന്യൂറ്റി ഇൻ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് വി സോ ഹൗ ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ദ വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് ദി ഫംഗ്ഷൻ വെൻ ജസ്റ്റ് ബൈ മിയർ സബ്സ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷൻ യു ആർ അൺഏബിൾ ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ദി ബിഹേവിയർ ഓഫ് ദ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ സോ വട്ട് ഇറ്റ് വി ഡു വി ട്രൈ ടു അപ്രോച്ച് ദാറ്റ് വാല്യൂ ഫ്രം ലെഫ്റ്റ് ദെൻ ഫ്രം റൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ട്രൈ ടു സീ ദ ബിഹേവിയർ ഓഫ് ദ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ in the very very minute neighborhood and then we found the value of the function at that particular place okay so uh, that's how we got introduced to limits in the last class so we are going to continue we are going to do one more question similar to that let's quickly move on into the class so let's do one more question so it says the question says find limit x tending to 0 1 by x if it exists if you say if you see it says if it exists what do you mean by that so we saw in the previous uh, class that when you approach a function from left from a number less than that particular number and also from right you should end up in the same value only then you can decide that that function will take up that value in the neighborhood okay so if it exists in the sense if it actually comes to the same value from left and from right only then we say that the limit exists so now we need to check the left hand limit and the right hand limit and if it both gives you the same value then we can definitely say that the egg limit exists and we can say that f of x will take that particular value at that particular place okay the function will take that particular value that we get okay now on the outset let's see if i directly substitute at ex exactly x is equal to 0 will i be able to find the f of x function if it is easy i can directly find right so what do i do i put it as 1 by 0 so 1 by 0 it's infinity so i am unable to find whether it's giving me the right answer or not okay because it's it's infinity it's not a real value that we are getting so now let's try with the left hand and the right hand and also the question also says that we'll have to check whether the limit exists okay so let's quickly have a look now how do i find the left hand limit i have to find limit x tends to a number less than 0 0 minus f of x value so that's nothing but limit of a function that's slightly less than 0 that is some 0 minus small h and h is negligible so i say limit h tends to 0 so now what should i do i need to substitute 0 minus h in the place of x so this is nothing but limit h tending to 0 1 by 0 minus h so this is nothing but limit h tends to 0 1 by minus h that is again equal to 1 by minus 1 by 0 i know this nothing called as minus 0 but this is a negative 1 by 0 okay anything by 0 is infinite okay again i'm getting the same value so i'm going to call this as minus infinity i can easily see that the limit from the left hand side it goes into the negative side of the infinity okay the infinity on the negative side of the number line okay now let me again check the right hand limit also and see what happens to it then decide as to whether the limit exists or not so i'm going to look into the right hand limit let me change the color of the pen okay now i'm going to look into limit x tending to 0 plus a number slightly more than 1 f of x okay so that is nothing but limit h being very negligible tending to 0 f of 0 plus h a number that's slightly greater than 0 so i have limit h tending to 0 1 by 0 plus h that is nothing but limit h tending to 0 1 by h that is 1 by 0 this is also infinity but it does not carry the positive sign but it's i mean does not carry the negative sign and it's positive infinity it's the infinity on the right hand side of the number line right 
So obviously we can see that this function tends to the negative infinity on the left hand side and this to the positive infinity on the right hand side. So the limits are not equal, the left hand limit and the right hand limit. So it clearly says that from two sides when you approach, you are approaching two different numbers altogether. So again, we are unable to determine what's happening. So we can conclude that the limit does not exist. So we can conclude that the limit does not exist. Okay. Okay. Now, so I said the limit does not exist. So am I right? You would definitely like to know that, right? So let's quickly have a graphical representation of this. See, anything in numbers might confuse you a bit, but when it is put in the graphical way, in the diagrammatical pattern, it gives you an ease to understand, okay? So let's quickly move on and have a look at the, uh, you know, the graphical representation. Let me clear it. Quickly have a note of this. Here we have now given numbers like how we did in the previous sum. We gave values of x, very, very uh, minute values that all that almost approaches to 0. And then from a negative number from the left hand side and we've seen what happens to x. See, it just keeps going on like this. So it's a very small number, negative of 10,000 and all that. It will keep going on that way. So it goes on to negative infinity. It will go higher, higher and higher. Okay, you can easily see the trend here. So when I approach it from the right, so I go on to positive infinity. Correct. So it keeps going on higher and higher in the positive direction and here in the negative direction, meaning it goes into smaller and smaller numbers, smaller and smaller values. Okay. So here it almost approaches negative infinity and here it almost op ap approaches positive infinity. Correct. So let's quickly go on. So we can clearly see that as x approaches the zero, uh, approaches to zero, the corresponding values of one of x are no, one by x are not getting close to any number. Correct. It keeps going on and on and on and on and on like that. So it's definitely approaching only infinity. Let's have a look at the graph. See, this is how the graph looks. To make it even more in detail, this actually goes on. Okay. So this one at exactly zero, very close to zero. Just see here, it's in the neighborhood of zero. You see, its value is almost, in the left-hand side, it's almost negative of infinity. And in the right-hand side, it is positive infinity. So both do not lead you to the same number. So your left-hand limit is different and your right-hand limit is different. Correct? So it means that the limit does not exist. I hope you understand this better now. Okay. So we'll quickly move on to the next question. Okay. Now, this question says that evaluate each of the following limits. Now, it does not ask you to check whether the limits exist or not, right? In the previous question, we saw that we were asked to check whether the limit exists. So we had to check the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, and we saw whether both are equal. If both are equal, the limit exists, right? If the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit, the limit exists. LHL equal to RHL, then both are equal to the same number, then we say that the limit exists and the function also tends to the same value as the limit. Okay. Now, here it says evaluate the limit. So, you will be asked to evaluate limits only if the limit exists. So, here we need not check if the limit exists at all. We are directly going to find the value or the limiting value of the function directly here without checking the left hand limit and the right hand limit. How are we going to do that? So it says limit x tends to 0, 2x plus 1 the whole q minus 5. Like how we substituted the value of h in the left hand and the right hand, 
Here, we are going to substitute the value what the x tends to in the place of x. Okay, you just have to substitute the value that x tends to in its place in the function to find the value of it. That's all. Let's quickly have a look. So, what happens here? The function becomes 2 into 0 plus 1 the whole cube minus 5. Right, 2 into 0 is 0. So, here it gets simplified to 1 cube minus 5. That is 1 minus 5 is equal to minus 4. Okay, so now this is my answer. It gives you a proper number, a real number as its value. So, we can decide looking at it that limit x tends to 0 the function that I have been given, I'll just name it as f of x is equal to minus 4. So, this is quite easy, right? I'm able to see the behavior of the function at exactly x is equal to 0. So, this is not very difficult. So, this is how we evaluate uh, limits given a simple function, okay? So, let's quickly move on to the next question now. The next question says, I have to evaluate this limit, okay? This is also an evaluate question. This is question number two from the first exercise on your textbook. So, it says limit x tends to minus 5, x square minus 25 by x plus 5. So, we are going to apply the same technique here. It says evaluate. So, we assume that the left hand and the right hand limit exists. So, we are not going to check, but we are just going to substitute and see what's going to happen. So, when I substitute, what happens? Minus 5 the whole square minus 25 by minus 5 plus 5. Okay. So, this is what is limit x tending to 0 f of x that I have been given, okay? Limit x tending to 0, I'm sorry, limit x tending to minus 5 f of x value is this. Now, observe carefully, what do I get when I evaluate this? I get 25 minus 5 square is 25 minus 25 plus minus 5 plus 5. So, this is nothing but 0 by 0. So, again, I'm stuck. If I get a 0 by 0, it's very clear that I'm unable to determine what's happening to the function. This is an indeterminate form. So, again, should I do the left hand and the right hand? It's little complicated, right? So, since they say evaluates, they don't ask you to check whether the limit exists. So, it means that the limit exists, okay? So, now there is another way of, of evaluating it. Let's see how to do it. I'm going to see my hindrance is that when I substitute minus 5 in place of x, this plus 5 makes it 0. And here also, this 25 minus 25 makes it 0. So, if I can eliminate at least this x plus 5 somehow, it becomes easy for me to evaluate the limits, right? So, I'm going to try to, um, I will try to simplify the given function. How do I do that? I have x square minus 25. Is there any way to factorize that? It's a quadratic equation, a second degree equation. Is there any way to factorize it? So, just go back. You would have definitely learnt the identity a square minus b square. If you have square of difference of squares of two numbers, you can write it as a minus b into a plus b. Am I right? So, this is written as product of two binomials, right? So, this has been factorized. So, similarly, I have difference of squares of two numbers. Let me show you. This is limit x tends to minus 5. This is x square minus 25 is nothing but 5 square. Am I right? So, this is of the form a square minus b square. I'm going to apply this and factorize it and see if I can simplify or cancel some common factors. If at all I have anything, I'll cancel it out. So, x square minus 5 square can be written as x minus 5 into x plus 5 and I have x plus 5 on the denominator. These are basically factors, right? 
this something into something by something. So I have a common factor. I'm just going to cancel it out. So now it has made my life easier. So it's just limit x tending to minus 5, x minus 5. So whatever disturbed me, I have basically eliminated it. Because a negative number with the same positive number was getting nullified. So I have actually removed both the positive add-ons to it. So that it doesn't put me into the same 0 by 0 form and give me issues. Okay. So now I substitute, I get a proper value, minus 5, minus 5. That is equal to minus 10. So I can say that limit x tends to minus 5 my f of x that's given is equal to minus 10. So if I smartly rewrite the function I'll be able to find the limits without much problems right okay so now could we go on to the next one The next question says limit x tending to 2 x square minus x minus 2 by x square minus 3x plus 2. Okay, this is my f of x now. Let me directly try to substitute the values and see what's happening. So when I substitute, I get 2 square minus 2 minus 2 by 2 square minus 3 into 2 plus 2. Okay, so this is nothing but 4 minus 4 divided by 4 minus 6 plus 2. Minus 6 plus 2 is again minus 4. So 4 minus 4 by 4 minus 4. This is again 0 by 0 4. So it's not going to work. I'm now unable to determine. So first thing is I'll just check if it works in the normal way. Okay, I'll substitute and see if it works. If it works well and good, I can easily find the limiting value. If it doesn't work, now I'll have to rewrite it in such a way that when I substitute, it doesn't give me a 0 by 0 format. Now, how do I simplify this? This is again a quadratic equation. So go back to your basics. How do you factorize a quadratic equation? Only when you factorize it, you write it as a product of two factors, you can cancel it out, right? Here, I cannot cancel these two. It goes wrong because there is a minus sign there. Only if two numbers are getting multiplied, when you divide it by something, you can cancel it out. So now I'm going to write it as product of two binomial, I mean, uh, two linear binomials. Okay, so how do I do that? Let's quickly have a recap. This is x square minus x minus 2. This is a quadratic equation. So what do what should we do? We can split the middle term. Okay, so how do we do this? So we see the coefficient of x. It's minus 1. So minus 1 is the coefficient of x. And then we multiply the coefficient of x square and the constant term. And that gives us minus 2. Now, we have to choose two numbers such that when you add them up, you should get minus 1. And when you multiply them, you should get minus 2. So, could we quickly look into the options? So, when I multiply two numbers, I should get minus 2. Then I have only one option. 2 is a prime number. Obviously, minus 2 into 1 or 2 into minus 1 are only two options wherein I will get minus 2. Now, let's see, look into this combination. When I add them, will I get minus 1? Minus 2 plus 1. Will it give me minus 1? Yes, it does give me minus 1. So, this is my pair. These two are my pair of numbers that when multiplied gives me minus 2 and that on sum gives me minus 1. So, now I'm going to split the middle term using these two numbers, x square. This minus 1x, I'm going to write it as minus 2x plus 1x. See, I'm picking up these two numbers from here. Minus 2x plus 1x minus 2. If you just simplify this, you will get back this. This has been rewritten, that's all. By, now let me look into this equation. Now I need to simplify that also, factorize that also, x square minus 3x plus 2. So my x coefficient is minus 3, that will be my sum and my product of x square coefficient and the constant is 2. 
that should be my product. So let me choose two numbers such that it gives me 2 on multiplication and minus 3 on sub. So again 2 is a, a prime number so I have only one option. It's 2 into 1 or minus 2 into minus 1. Okay, both gives me plus 2 as product. But let me see which helps me here. If I do 2 plus 1, I get plus 3. But my sum is minus 3 here. If I do minus 2 minus 1, I get minus 3. Okay, so this, these two are my pairs. So what do I do? I rewrite this as x square. Okay, my pair is minus 2x minus 1x plus 2. Okay, so this is my function limit x tending to 2. I am still not done. If you substitute at this stage also, you are going to get 0 by 0 only. If you want, you can try it out. Now, I am going to factorize this further. Now, how do I factorize this? When I have pair of terms, meaning when I have even number of terms, I can pair it up and try to factorize. So now x square minus 2x has a common x in between them. I'm going to remove it and put it outside. So I can write it as x minus 2. When I remove x, the remaining x goes inside. Minus from 2x, x has been removed. The remaining minus 2 goes inside. Plus, I need to get the same x minus 2 here because it will be easy for my factorization. I hope you all remember all this. So now x minus 2, for me to get the same x minus 2, I just have to remove plus 1 outside. Divided by, again, I have 4 terms. Let me factorize this. x is common. I have x minus 2 and I have to get the same x minus 2. So for that, I have to take minus 1 outside. Right? Just try multiplying inside, you will get this. So now, again I can see two common factors. One is x minus 2 here. Common factors, a pair of common factors. So I am going to remove that x minus 2 outside. So the remaining factor x my plus 1 divided by, again I am going to x minus, take x minus 2 here also and I will get x minus 1. Correct? So now, this 2, you know, this was the hindrance that we had because every time we substituted 2, it became 0. It made it 0 because there was a minus 2. So now, our hindrance is gone. Just cancel it out. Now, substitute your 2, you get a proper answer. So you get 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 1. That's 3 by 1 and that is equal to 3. So what's my answer? My final answer is that limit x tending to 2x square minus x minus 2 by x square minus 3x plus 2 is nothing but 3. So what did I do? I just rewrote whatever I had in a different way and cancelled out the things that were giving us hindrance. That's it. So I rewrote and made it in a different form and then substituted the limits. So that's about this question. We'll move on to the next question. Okay, now by now you all would know. So when I let's first substitute and see as usual 0 cube plus 7 into 0 by 0 square plus 2 into 0. So this is again anything into 0 is going to be giving me, giving me 0 and 0 square is also going to be 0 and this is again 0 by 0 format. So I cannot directly substitute I need to do something to it and convert it into a form that's easy for me to substitute. So what do I do? I need to simplify. Obviously, when I look at it, I can see common factors. So for factorization is my only hope now. Let's see what happens. I have x common. I'm going to remove it out. So when from x cube, when I take x out, I'll have x square plus 7 because x has been taken out divided by from here again, I take x out. I am left with x plus 2. Now what do I have? I have x on top and an x on the bottom. When I cancel it out, my hindrance is gone. 0 multiplied to anything makes it 0. So now I have terms that are free from x. So it will not get nullified. Now I can happily go ahead substituting. So 0 square plus 7 by 0 plus 2. So this is nothing but 7 by 2. So here I get the answer. 
that this is equal to 7 by 2. Easy, isn't it? Okay, we'll quickly move on to the next one now. Okay. So now we factorized. Now this looks a little different. There's nothing to factorize there. Of course you have. Let's see. Now, I have two functions like this. So I would like to give you a few properties. Okay, in the next class we'll have a you know, look into each and every property. But for now, I'll give you a property involving limits. Whenever you have a limit of x tending to some number a, a function minus another function, okay, then you have the rights to split it. That is, you can apply the limit to individual functions and find the difference of it. Similarly, when two functions are added up, again you can split it, take the individual limits and add them up. Multiplication also is the same. You can apply limits individually and multiply it. And for division also, you can apply the limit to the numerator and to the denominator and divide it. Okay. So here, what are we going to do? I'm going to split this and see if I'm able to apply the limit. Okay. But one problem I have, if I split and do, let's see. Let's do it and then we'll see what happens. When I substitute 1 here, it becomes 1 by 0. That's infinity. And if I substitute 1 in the next one also, I end up getting 2 by 0. That's also infinity. Okay. So now what am I going to do is I'm going to rewrite and see if I'm going to have the same problem even otherwise. So how do I rewrite? These are rational functions. Difference of two rational functions meaning difference of two fractions. So how do you solve it? You take LCM and solve it. Okay. So how do you do it? It's very very usual. You've been solving it right from your junior grades. So we'll simplify this and see how do we do this. So this is 2 by this is x square minus 1. I can write it as a square minus b square that is x minus 1 into x plus 1. So I'm going to write it that way. I hope you all remember how to subtract two rational fractions, algebraic fractions. So I take the LCM. The common factors x minus 1 is common between both. So I take it only once and then another factor that is there is x plus 1. So the LCM would be x minus 1 into x plus 1. So when you look into this, compare this with the first fraction, the only factor that's unavailable is x plus 1. You multiply that to the numerator, you get x plus 1 there minus. It's the same numerator, denominator. So into 1 gives you this. Here into x plus 1 gives you this. So that's why we multiply that to the numerator. So here into 1, I'm going to multiply to 1 to the numerator. I get 2 here. So now my work is almost done. Let me see. So I have x plus 1 minus 2. That is x minus 1 by x minus 1 by x plus 1. Always remember for positive or zeros, if it has zero x in every term, it becomes a 0 everywhere it will make it 0, okay? I'm sorry, it's not 0, it's 1. That was giving us hindrance. So this is 1 and here also it's 1 and here also it's 1. Okay. So now 1 minus 1 was my hindrance. It made it 0 every time. So I was getting an indeterminate value or an infinity. So now I'm cancelling it out. So I have a simplified, very convenient fraction with me that is 1 by x plus 1. So I can just go about substituting and find my limits. So it's 1 by 2. So my solution is 1 by 2.
I hope you all understood. So please practice these questions again and again. Go back, go through my videos and then make a note of all the solutions and practice it till you are comfortable with it. So thank you, Sairam.